Hello and welcome to Focus on Israel and the Palestinian Territories. I'm Paul Calvert. John 9 verse 1 to 7 says this, Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God could be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay from the saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. A fantastic miracle. But what is it like being blind today and living in the Palestinian territories of Bethlehem? I spoke with Sabha Asma, a resident of Bejala, Bethlehem, and asked her what difficulties she faces. Well, uh, my, the most difficulty is when I have to go to, um, to buy some vegetables from the market. Do you go on your own out in the street? Yes, I do. How easy is that? Uh, I have learned to go by train. Are, are there difficulties on the roads, with, with walking on the roads in, in Bethlehem? Well, uh, the Lord has given me good ears, so I have to concentrate from the cars, you know. I uh, take my stick and I, go, go, I walk close to the sidewalk so that I don't have any accidents. Uh, are blind people accepted in the community here in Bethlehem? Not really. Uh, we, you know, people think that we all should live together. In, in one community? In one community. But uh, the, it's not working like that. So we are all separated. Like for me, I live by myself. So in what way are blind people not accepted? Not accepted. Like to go out and work. Um, now, do you live here on your own or do you live in a community? No, I live by myself. How long have you lived on your own? About 13 years. How easy is it living on your own practically, like cooking and cleaning and keeping a house? I can I can clean for uh, for myself. I don't need anybody to come and help me. And I am dependent. I don't do much cooking. Now, do you work at all? I work in a factory. And this factory makes all the underclothing. And what's my job there? After it's already made on the machine, they, I take the piece of clothing and bring it, uh, it's on the wrong side out, so I put it on the right side, and then I have to make it, uh, fold it up like as if it was ironed. So how many hours a week do you work here in Bethlehem? I work eight hours a day. And you work six days a week? Five days and a half. Five and a half days a week. Right, so, so how much do you get paid in all for working here in Bethlehem for five and a half days? The money is very little, about $100 I get. So a hundred dollars would be about fifty pounds. So that's that's very very low. Are you able to live on on no. that much money? If it weren't for somebody else helping me with rent, I couldn't make it. How has your faith in Christ helped you here in Bethlehem? Well, if it weren't for the faith, for my faith in the Lord, I couldn't have lived one moment by myself. So have you seen God provide miraculously here in Bethlehem? Thank God. Yeah. He has always provided. At least I have never. I don't have to go begging and t- but complain to people. I don't have money because the Lord has given me just enough to keep going. That's exciting because the Bible does say blessed are the poor. And uh, when there's a sense that you're poor, you see the provision of God. You cry out to God and he provides you. So that's exciting to see that God is providing in that way. Now, can you get Braille material here in Bethlehem? No. How, how would you get your Braille material for reading? Uh, from Jerusalem. Uh, and we aren't allowed to go to, uh, to Jerusalem because we have no permit. Okay, so you'd have to get a friend to go and get that for you? Yeah, if I know somebody that comes from Jerusalem, I can ask them to bring for me. Now, here in your house, you have a TV. Now, that seems really strange for a blind lady to have a TV. What sort of things do you listen to on television? Well, I've got a, a satellite, and I have asked for uh, to have, uh, you know, as much as I can, a Christian channel. So are the Christian channels important to you? Very important. So that's a very important part of your life? Yeah, it is. I'm standing here outside the old city of David, right next to Hezekiah's tunnel. In 701 BC, the Assyrian king laid siege to Jerusalem. King Hezekiah had a problem. He needed water for his city. The solution was to build a tunnel. 
533 meters long. They dug the tunnel from opposite ends and they met in the middle. And in 1880, a boy bathing in the spring found an insignia on the wall which spoke, to, spoke about the two groups meeting. The tunnel is in the Kidron Valley, outside the city gate, in the city of David. And today you can walk through the tunnel, but take a torch, it's very, very dark, and the roof gets very, very low in some places. But at the other end you will find the Pool of Siloam. Now a miracle took place here. If you remember the story of the blind man, he came to Jesus and Jesus put some mud on his face and told him to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. And when he washed, he was healed. A miracle had taken place. Now Hezekiah was clever. Jerusalem had been saved and the king of Assyria failed to conquer the city of Jerusalem. Jesus opened the eyes of the blind and they could see. And today he's doing the same. People are spiritually blind, but they're coming to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Thank you.